few things that I want to pull out this morning from the scriptures. I titled my message, Undistracted and Undeterred. There is a lot sometimes that life can throw at us that sent us, that send us down a path maybe we would rather not have gone. And sometimes if you're honest, we go down that path before we realize it, oops, maybe this isn't the path we should be on. And oftentimes, it's in the middle of those situations or circumstances that we find ourselves in when we've gone down a path maybe where we shouldn't have or because of stuff that happened in our life, we made choices and we've ended up at a certain place. Many times, if we're honest, we can find ourselves distracted and disoriented And feeling like we've created a disaster. And many times, in those moments that we find ourselves in, that we feel those, they're, they're real feelings. They're not just things in your head, but they're real feelings. They affect our perspective. They affect our, our outlook. They, they affect everything about our life. And, and when we're in those moments of discouragement and, and distraction and, and, and feeling like we've just missed the mark, we have a tendency to stay there thinking that, well, I made my bed, I have to live in it. And I want to tell you, it's in moments like that, that God is more real than he is than when things are going our way because his attitude, his perspective, his love, his commitment is undaunting in those moments. In fact, it's often when we find ourselves in these moments where God is speaking so loudly, assuring us that he's got this and that he's going to walk us through and that he's going to give us the equipment we need so that those things don't define us, but they become a stepping stone and become a testimony of victory. I'm not one about gloating about the past because the past has been an experience for us. But the past is not the guide for the future. The past isn't the backdrop for our future. The past is something that we can say is a stepping stone. Something we have to learn to leave behind us so that we're undaunted, undistracted, or undeterred in the future that God has you. If you find yourself in one of these aspects here this morning, I want to tell you there is hope. It does not define you. Just because we've made those choices or have had the prognosis over us does not mean it's the end because we serve a God that always turns the page. And the next page just adds to the chapter that we've had before. It never says the end. Moments like that ought to encourage us because we know our future is brighter than our past. We're not defined by our past. We're not defined by the mistakes we made. We're defined by what God declares over us and the future that is ours. I want to pull a few up. I want to go to passage scripture in the book of Philippians. I've used this passage before, but it's interesting when you take the Greek New Testament, which the, the New Testament was originally written in, When you take the Greek New Testament, you start looking at how it's written and words that are being used. There, there's things that come to life that never came to life before. And so I don't want to teach you Greek, so this is not my purpose. But I want to give you several words that Paul uses when he's writing this letter to the Christians that are in the city of Philippi. And some of these words can be missed when we just stick to the English language because I've said this before, Greek is very expressive. Um, it can use two words and it can mean multiple sentences because of how full it is. And so I want to visit Philippians chapter 3 and I'm going to read three verses this morning and I want to pull some stuff out of it dealing with us being distracted or undeterred. Because I know God's call of our life is not to struggle. Struggle is a part of life as we navigate through things. But that navigating teaches us that God's faithful, his word is true, and what he declares will always happen. 
So we get the opportunity to align our faith with what God declares in it. As I said before, there's so much in life that can get our attention. They can sidetrack us. And often when we're sidetracked, it leaves us distracted and wandering and frustrated, often disappointed. I want to talk this morning on how does being undistracted and undeterred become a reality in our life. In Philippians chapter 3, I have those verses up there for you. I'm going to start reading a verse 12. And I may make some comments, but I'm not sure. I may end up just reading it and then pulling out some stuff that I want to leave you this morning. Starting at verse 12, it says, I don't mean to say that I've already arrived or achieved. Now, Paul's writing this. He says a lot of things before this part about all his achievements and all the things that he's acquired and the things that he's learned and stuff that he's navigated through and his accomplishments, all those things. He spends a lot of verses explaining how qualified he was for what he was doing. And then he switches gears. He says here, I I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. Then he uses a word, he says, but I press on to possess that which for Christ has possessed me. Then he says in verse 13, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved. You notice he says that twice? It's almost like he he doesn't want them to have the wrong impression. Just because I've accomplished these things, just because I have checkmarked a lot of things in my life, I want to tell you, I have in no way arrived Then he says that again. He says that again in this verse. He says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I I have not achieved it. (laughs) That tells me something significant about Paul that I think we can all learn. So in our own journeys, our own walks, Paul was still a person that was learning. Have you ever been around people that felt they've arrived? Just, oh, yeah, I, oh, I've done, oh, I've learned that. I, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You almost get the idea that they can't learn anything anymore. That's at least the way they communicate. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you are the finished package, we are in trouble. Hey? If you're the pinnacle of truth, oh, my goodness, we better start calling on God. But what those things do do is contribute to our story. But our story doesn't end. Paul says, hey, twice, I want to tell you, I haven't reached it. And then he says again in verse 13, no, I, I haven't achieved it. But then he gives us something that's significant for us to push through the next phase of our life when we're in those moments of struggle and disappointment and distraction. He says, no, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing. Then he says, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Then verse 14, I'll end with that. He says, I press on. There is several words that are very important, purposely used. Press on is one of those. Forgetting the behind is another. Looking forward is another. But press on is used twice. It's used in verse 12. He says, I haven't reached perfection, but I press on. That's, that's, something, that's something that we want to visit back to. I, I press on. And then he says, I haven't achieved it. I forget with the past. I'm, I'm looking forward to what's that. That's another important word. And then he says in verse 14, I press on. He uses it again. Something significant about that word. And then he says, I press on to reach the end of the race, to receive the heavenly prize, which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. The question this morning I want to ask you is, how do we live undistracted and undeterred? Can I pull three things out this morning? I'm typical three things because my memory is only so far and after three, it's usually gone. So you have to bear with my own struggle and weakness. I prefer one, but you know, one is easy to forget. You know, if you have a few, at least you got to, oh yeah, it went in a sequence. So that's what we're doing this morning. We're sequencing it. 
The first thing that we need to understand if we want to be undistracted, undeterred in our life through whatever comes our way, it's important to establish that because life will throw stuff at us. There are things that life will throw at you. It it doesn't throw at me, but it still puts me in the same situation. Distracted and discouraged and disappointed and hurt and all those other different things that we work through in our own life. So how do we live undistracted, undeterred? The first thing that I want to grab out of this passage is we need to be aware of what gets our attention. We've got to make yourself aware of what gets our attention because what gets our attention influences our direction. Yeah. Hey, that even sounded pretty cool, didn't it? That I didn't even write down in my notes. Fresh from heaven. Our, our mind plays a key role and how we live out our life. We have to be aware of what gets our attention. It's interesting, Paul says here, I'm gonna just pull out of different places. It's not gonna be in order, but it'll make sense in the end, trust me. Paul says, I'm forgetting what's behind. That tells me he's making himself aware of the distractions for his goal. He's making a choice. Let me tell you this. There's one thing that no one can take away from us is our choice. How many have had kids that have grown up and and you've made them sit in the corner and they sit in the corner and said, just so you know, in my mind I'm standing. See, they made the choice. Sometimes we get up in the morning, we make choices at, at, at what people say to us or who we run into. We are making choices all the time. The reality of it is we make so many choices in a day that we forget that we're making them. They just become naturally happening. And then we wonder why. It's because we made the choice. But I didn't think about it. No, you didn't because it's become such a habit of yours and of mine that we don't think, okay, now I'm going to get mad, <laughs> Right? doesn't work that way. But we still, we, we can't negate that we make that choice. You guys chose to get up this morning and put the specific clothes on that you're wearing. Some of it looks really nice. Some of it, well, I would change it next time. Not really. <laughs> Not really, please. You all look splendid and wonderful. But we made the choice. So Paul says, the choice I'm making, because Paul had things in his past. If we read up in Paul's past, he, he wasn't all rosy. He did a lot of things that you and I would go, he needs to go to prison for the rest of his life. In fact, if we would really understand what all Paul chose to do in his life, we would question the fact, could he even write letters to a church? But that just shows you. Our story never ends, see? With God, he just turns the page and it's another chapter. If Paul would allow his past to affect his future, he wouldn't have been where God wanted to be. He wouldn't have been influential the way he was. He wouldn't have walked the walk that he walked because his past would hold him hostage. God frees us from our past. Some Christians need to wake up to that reality. Be aware of what gets your attention. He made the choice. That's, like I said, the only thing, the power we do. What choice did he make? Now we're going to get into some key words here. First of all, he says, not that I already have achieved, already been perfect. He says, but I press on. The Greek word there is dioko. It's a cool word because it's more than... It's more than walking into something or achieving something. The idea is to press into something or to pursue with a goal in mind. It's to pursue or or to press on, recognizing that it's probably not going to be all easy. That's why he chose the word Dioko, because it symbolizes I'm willing to invest in the process of getting me there on my focus. 
I'm going to be focused. Because there's a lot of distractions out there, and if I'm not dioko, I'm going to be distracted and deterred from my goal. Interesting little word. It's only like five letters. But yet implication of investment, choice, focus, determination, and persistence. Huge, isn't it? Dioko. Almost sounds like a drink that we could order at Starbucks or something. So he says that I press on. He purposed where his attention was going. That tells me that he recognizes there was things in his life that were going to distract him. Dioko. He goes on and says that. He says, I press on to grab hold of. The word possess is to grab hold of that which Christ has took hold of me. Verse 12. That was verse 12. There is another interesting word used here about I press on to possess. That Greek word is made up of two words. This is the neat thing about the Greek language is, I don't want to give you Greek lessons, but it's just really cool when you, when there's two words expressing something, often the Greeks will put the words together. And, and you can translate it one way, but if you look at both words and then put them together, you get a bigger picture of what's happening. And the word here with the idea of, I'm going to possess, go after, press after, is the word katalabano. Kata means to come alongside. You know, like, like you're here and you're not leaving. You're around, you're behind, you're in front. It's, it's wherever you go, it's there. Uh-oh, that's not good. And then the word lambano means to, to, uh, to take or to acquire. So what he's saying here is, not only do I press on, but I press on to get my life surrounded with what God has for me. You see, that's, that's determination. That's focus. Because point one is we need to be aware of what gets our attention. Because the things that get our attention set us in the direction that we go. So he says, katalabano means I'm surrounding myself everywhere around me with what he has for me. That's what he's pressing in for. That's what he's de over. Zeroed in. Get that thing around me. What he has for me. Is this boring? Okay, so he says this. So to possess the perfection which Christ Jesus possessed me. The same Greek word is used, katalabano. He says, I want to grab hold of what God has for me just like he grabbed hold of me. (sighs) Did you get that? I want to grab on to what God has to give me what I need, what, what my life is just like he surrounded me and receive me. I want to receive the same way. You want to talk about the windows of heaven open? I mean, they are open. I want to surround myself with them. That they become a part of my life. You see, often we've gone into a situation where we think we got to strive for that stuff where Paul says, no, 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 it's there. I want to be focused on it. I want to be surrounded with it. I don't just want it in the morning when I'm struggling or I don't want it just when I don't know what to do. I want that to be a reality of everyday life. That, my friends, you can live heaven on earth. Mm. I want it. The reality is, it's mine already. I want to live with its reality. we got to be aware of what gets our, dist- our, 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 our attention. And he says this, I press on. I, I, I want to grab hold and surround myself with what he grabbed hold and surrounded himself with me. And then he says this, how does he do that? 
He says that by forgetting the past. The word forgetting is an interesting work, interesting word in the Greek language to tell. It's, it's again two words, but epilathanomai. Epilathanomai. And, and it's not that you forget, okay? It's not that you, it's gone from your memory and it's like a test. Oh, I don't know why I didn't study that. It's not that kind of forget. It's a forgetting where you remember, but it doesn't have influence or sting. There's things we're not going to forget in life. We've done some pretty stupid things. Some of you have done more stupid things. No, let's stop. Let's go there. Do you get what I'm saying? There's things in your life that sometimes we fight to forget, and you know what? Give it up. There's things we won't forget. That's why Paul uses this Greek word. He says, forgetting those things, yeah, but the idea is, you don't forget some stuff. Sometimes we have to live with choices we've made, but, but, if it no longer has influence as sting, oh, we're free. We're free. That's what he says. Isn't it amazing? This is just four verses, and look, look the content we're getting out of them. He says, Forgetting the past. Epi lathanomai. I, 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 there's things that are going to be here. Absolutely. But they no longer have influence or sting. They just become a part of my story. The next chapter. It's never the end. It's the next chapter. He says, forgetting the past. How, how do we do this? How do we press on? How do we take hold? How do we allow that to influence? He says, by forgetting the past. And then he says, looking forward to what is ahead. Again, dealing with choices. This word is an interesting word, and it's epi, it's uh, epikek tenonomai. Okay? I should have made the writing a little bit bigger, but... When there's a lot of ticks and all kinds of stuff you can lose. What that means is he's forgetting the past but looking forward to the future. The word there is expressing him stretching out. When you are holding on and you are stretching as far as you can, you get just a tip. What happens? You're very focused, right? Bring, bring, bring. I'm busy right now. You're distracted. But he's using the word epic tenomai. But I, forgetting the past, and I am reaching all focus. Reaching. The two words there, ah, forget it. He's reaching, he's focused. It's what has his attention. And I ask you a question this morning. What has your attention? You don't have to say it. You know why? Because our life goes in the direction of it. I did a quote one a couple weeks ago or a couple days ago on Instagram. Focus determines direction. Do you, do you like where you're going? What are you focused on? What occupies your attention? Paul says, I'm making myself aware of what gets my attention because I know what I focus on has the greatest influence. Forgetting the past, looking forward to what's ahead. If we want to live undeterred and undistracted, we got to be aware of what gets our attention. There's a second thing here, and I'm going to wrap up real quick. The second thing is, if we want to live undistracted, undeterred, not only do we need to be aware of what gets our attention, but secondly, we have to learn to celebrate our progress. we got to learn to celebrate our progress. We've got to stop always looking at what we're not doing or what we're not accomplishing We've got to learn to stop in the midst of it, in the midst of our struggle, the words that have spoken, and we've got to celebrate from where we came. 
we don't celebrate enough. Because we're too busy trying to achieve. We're too, too busy trying to get approval. We're too busy trying to make sure we do the right thing. You know what? You can try to do the right thing all the time. And I'll guarantee you, you won't hit it all the time. So what do you do in the midst of it? You celebrate what you have accomplished. When I embarked in this Greek course, I figured I took Greek before. This is going to be simple, just educated. And boy, was I wrong. I went back to kindergarten. And I had to learn through. And there was moments, listen to me, there was moments that I felt I wasted my money and it's too much. I can't get it. But then I remember sitting there going, but look at what you already have gotten. And I start celebrating what I have achieved to that point, And then it fills me with encouragement to keep on going because I haven't stopped. You need to celebrate where God's brought you. Yes, you're not where you want to be. Yes, you still struggle with things in your life. So what? Celebrate where you've arrived. We got to learn to do that with others. We got to learn to celebrate with people. Why is it we always see people's mistakes and failures? It's, oh, yeah, you know, I was in coffee and I seen this. And can you imagine? You, my mom, I'm my mom, right? Why, don't we, why can't we flip that? Listen to this person's story. Look where they've come. Look what they've overcome. And celebrate that. We don't celebrate enough. But I'm telling you, heaven celebrates every step forward you make because he believes in us and knows that we have it in us. And the more we keep walking in the midst of the ups and downs, the more we see the reality of Christ in us accomplishing what he promised he would. Sometimes you have to turn around and do this to some people. Boom! (laughs) Right? Don't need to hear that. Celebrate. We do that at birthdays. Well, when you get around 50, then it's really not a celebration anymore. It's just kind of like you want to hide it, right? How old are you? It doesn't matter. It gets better with age, right? We call it better with age. You line up and look at the seniors menu. It's like, oh, this is not good. When you read and have to put this on, it's a reminder that your numbers are going up, not down. But why not celebrate? Why not celebrate what we've accomplished? We've got to learn to enjoy life. So much around of us just sucks our life out of us and gets us off. And we forget to celebrate. We forget to... Thank God where we're at and what he's doing because what he's done now, he's going to continue to do and it's going to even excel greater. Celebrate your progress. Sometimes we're so busy trying to achieve, we fail to recognize what we already accomplished. Third, I'd like to bring out in this path. I, I, I believe Paul, in writing this, is writing from a celebration perspective. Listen, look what I've learned. I've learned to forget. Hey, it's, it's memories there, but no influence, no sting. It's gone. It's, I've learned to do that. I've learned to stretch out and stay focused on what God's given me. I want to grab hold of I want that to surround my life and look where I've come. Look what I've done. Look where you can be. Look what God has done in your life. He's writing from a celebration perspective. At life, he's conquering. When maybe if you would have looked at his testimony and the things that went on, he probably wouldn't be good at conquering. Testimony. Celebrate your progress. There's a third thing. It's not directly said here, but based on Paul's attitude and his context of his life, I think he enjoyed the journey. I don't think Paul... I mean, he he was in prison... He was in prison when he wrote this letter, in prison. The whole book of Philippians, I've, I, I don't see him complain. I don't see him go, oh, you know, I'm just, oh, gee whiz, it's all coming down on me again. It's never like that. Because Paul learned to enjoy the journey. Enjoy it. Well, if you had my life, there wouldn't be much to enjoy. Well, Maybe not, but you can change the direction of your life by your perspective and choices you make. And you know what? What's bad can be good, and what the negative can flip down to a positive. Not because you're thinking positive, you're looking at it from another perspective. 
I've got to learn that we, we got to learn to do that more. We can't control life, but we can sure control our attitude about it. Amen. Amen. Paul says, <laughs> I've not arrived, but I press on to grab hold that what Christ has surrounded himself with me with. Same thing. I haven't arrived, he says again, but I forget the past and look forward. Look forward. Looking forward. Looking forward is a continuing thought. Looking is a present tense. It keeps on going. I'm looking forward. Looking forward. Hey, thanks for watching. And make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a single video or podcast. And share these videos with a friend. And don't forget, you can join us live every Sunday.